So I hope you enjoyed lesson number eight by Aguado. Now, here are a couple of things that will help you learn this piece. One of the first things that strikes me when I play this piece is a slightly disjointed melody at the beginning. It's kind of hard to get your head around, but one of the best ways to get your head around it is to sing it. Now, when my teachers used to say, can you sing a melody? I used to get really nervous, I used to hate it. But actually, when you're alone in your practice room, singing is a really great way to sort of internalize the pulse, internalize the rhythm. So unfortunately for you, I'm gonna to have to sing this now to explain what I mean. One of the best ways of doing it is to sing it to Do initially without the guitar, because Do has a really crisp and clear beginning to the syllable. Uh, so here we go, let me just grab this vocal mic a little closer. Here we go. Let's get my note. Do. Do, 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 Another great way to practice this piece with singing is to sing along with your guitar playing and also to make up some words that are relevant to the feeling of this piece. So here we go, here's an example. If you like this lesson and it helps, please subscribe to me and maybe give a like. Now I'm sure your singing is infinitely better than my terrible wailing. Anyway, the, the second thing to think about here is separating the melody line out from the accompaniment. This is particularly relevant in, I think, bar 18 onwards. One of the best ways of separating these out is to make sure you play a rest stroke on the melody line and free strokes on the accompaniment like this. Rest stroke, free stroke, rest stroke. You can hear it really separates those two lines out and it sounds quite nice. Another reason why separating the melody line out dynamically from the accompaniment is when you're in low dynamics like piano and pianissimo, we can actually play the melody line a little louder than the piano, for example, and then drop the accompaniment down to pianissimo. So to explain what I mean, I'm just gonna write on the back of my clapperboard here. So when you're playing forte and fortissimo, your melody line, which is this bit here, can be quite high up here, and your accompaniment can actually be quite close underneath. But when we're playing piano, to add that extra bit of clarity, we can actually have our melody a little above piano and our accompaniment substantially lower than piano. That'll give a really nice clarity to the texture of the guitar. That's definitely the last time I'm gonna sing on a tuned up episode. So if you like this uh, episode, give it a like. And also tell me in the comments how much I sound like a wailing cat.